Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, same to yourself, mister. series. Um, we'd seen last week, uh, as far as the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul, it seemed like it was just passing random thought when he was preaching to the, the heathen in Athens, basically the, the pagan um, folks out there. He mentioned that uh, we are all made of one blood. And so um, humans are not we have, we, we have differences, obviously, because of... Hi, good morning. Uh, Genesis chapter 10. Uh, we are distinguished or differentiated, obviously, on our on our looks, but that's because of our genes. But we're all still human. We're all still the same family. So no, there's, no, there's no distinction there between folks. We're all human. Um, we've also seen that... Well, I don't know if I... Well, we're going to address this a little bit more this week as far as that. Uh, in order for somebody to be human, obviously, would have had from uh, from parents. So there, there, you don't have um, mutation of like, let's say, an uh, animal and a human. So that that that's one that's not possible. It doesn't exist. So for somebody to be able to go ahead and say that, oh, uh, this person of this people group or ethnic group or whatnot is lesser than, uh, nah, they might have propensities as far as their IQ different, but you don't have, they're, this, they're still the same genetic makeup. They're still human, they're still a person. So there's, no, there's no difference with them. The divisions came about, uh, it started initially with language and that's what we're gonna look at a little bit today as far as how some of the divisions came about. And then we have that uh, God initiated it because it was the fact that people were united against him. And uh, even though there was a unity there, it was ultimately a unity against God. And uh, the vision was put in place so that he wouldn't have to destroy the whole world again as he did uh, back with the flood. Uh, so Genesis 10, um, we'll start at our, on our first point of our outline. It said division and dispersion initiated by language, or which is the, the idea of the tongues. So then, okay, now these are the generations of uh, the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Unto them were uh, sons born after the flood. And then it's going to go through, um, particularly um, with the sons of um, Japheth initially. But you go down to verse 5, and then it, it, gives, it starts giving a, a listing of the types of divisions that would come about. It says, By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families, and in their nations. In Rome, excuse me, not Romans, in Revelation 5, verse 9, we have a similar outline of types of divisions that there would be, or that would come about. Well, this is looking backwards after the fact, but initially, uh, well, we'll see. Revelation 5, um, Verse 9, it says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by that blood out of, that he goes and gives a listing of divisions of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Okay, so you have the four basic divisions of what would be following the dispersion at Babel. If we were to go to Genesis 11, you start out, it's that, it states that uh, the whole earth was of one language and of one speech, and the division that came about was because God confounded the language, but the whole earth basically was united at that point, and then they wouldn't have had really much uh, division or any, much of anything dividing them outside of what you would have, well, what you would find even nowadays within groups that are all homogenous. That you, you know, you could say they're homogenous. You'd have folks that 
look down at other folks maybe because their IQ level isn't that great or they, uh, they have a social uh, structure that they divide people across. That they say, okay, well, this person's of a lower economic social structure than what they are. Maybe we're better than because of whatever other trait that they want to exalt. Uh, but as far as God was concerned, or as, he, as far as what we see divided here, it would have been initially just with the language, and from there, the other things that came about uh, would be. So we're divided, it mentions in Revelation, and then also here in Genesis, that it was by kindred. Okay, so by kindred. Uh, and that would be out of family and tribe. Okay, so kindred, the, the idea basically is your, your, your family, your tribe, tribal group. So in, initiating that was you have folks now that are spread out on the basis of language. So now they're only able to communicate with the folks that they could understand. And then from that point, you know, they would marry off, have kids, and so on and so forth until you have a, a, a large enough group of them to where it constitutes um, a tribe, you would say. Not just a family, but you have a tribe. You can have, well, we see it here in the U.S. Even, well, how many of y'all come from like a large family? You do? What's large? It's a relative <laughs> term here, right? <laughs> okay. Honestly, I would say probably anything over five, that would be me, though. But that's not, I mean, that's arbitrary. Five people, including the parents? Um, well, five siblings. I would say five siblings, above five siblings. But you could have, there. I mean, there, you have Israel. You had two generations of one sibling. Well, excuse me, one sibling and then two, and then from there it became 12. So third, uh, the third generation it became twelve, and then following that it was like multiplied. Uh, you know, it expanded it exponentially. Uh, but uh, I don't know, whatever, my mom's side there's nine of them. There's nine siblings. So then you would have the, and then beyond, they have other. Actually, they have more. Uh, won't get into that. But they, as far as from the same parents, is nine of them. And then you, um, my dad has something not quite as big. I mean, there's like four of them. But you, you know, you would have that, and then say they all each have at least one kid, and then they expand, and you go on. But say multiple have like two or three or five. So then it won't take very long before them to have, say, you know, there's a family. It's primarily based out of the, the South Carolina section, uh, Greenville section of South Carolina, uh, Bixby family. That going back to what would be, I guess, technically now the great grandparents, uh, there's over 159 of them because uh, they they had multiple. You know, each one they had like five siblings, and then they would have each sibling would have another like five or six or eight, and then they would ex just grow out like that. Anyway, so you have kindred. This would be a division. Uh, people, uh, the word there, well, in, in Greek is laos, but the, the idea is that it's a people, it's just a, like a large group, like a large crowd. And so it's not necessarily, I, div, I put it in here in quotations as far as ungoverned crowd of people, because you would have, you see this all throughout the world if you well, you don't have to study missions, but you can just study like um, just people groups or see, see divisions. There are groups within nations that are not, they're governed by the nation, but they themselves don't have their own government. Like they're a larger, they, they constitute a large enough group that they could have their own uh, within a nation, but they, they're, they're not, they're not, you know, their own nation per se. Um, We'll see the division as far as that, but they would be a people group within uh, within a nation. So you can say um, yes, like the Kurds in Turkey. Yeah, actually, that was the first thing that I was thinking of. There's an I was trying to think of an American equivalent, but like yeah, actually that would be a good one. You have the Kurds that take up that patch of land 
that is in, not just Turkey, but they cross over into Syria and to some degree Iraq as well. Um, but the problem is that they've never they've never been recognized officially, uh, and they want to have their own independence. Uh, you have a number of other regions in the world. Kashmir, I think, is one as well, like in northern India, bordering China, and then you have uh, technically Tibet, but that's argued as to whether or not they're their own individual, because they're under Chinese rule, but they consider themselves as to be a sole, whole separate. Um, anyway, so you have, they're a group of folks that are bigger than the tribe, because it constitutes a number of obviously tribes, and then you have that they're there, but they're not their own independent nation. Um, so they're ungoverned in the sense that, that they're not, they don't have their own government, even though they are under government. Does that make sense? I'm not, I'm not confusing with that. So um, the, the, the native tribes technically have their own rule here. Yes? Well, like we've got the Seminole Indians in uh, Florida. <laughs> Yeah, we have the Seminole, the Miccosukee. Uh, the Cherokees are out west now, because they got run out. And then you have, well, actually, almost all the other tribes as well, like the Sioux and the Navajo and all that uh, out west. But they they technically govern themselves to some degree, as long as they're under a reservation. Uh, but they're still, I guess, if you were to look at it just from our perspective, you know, as American citizens, uh, they're a people group in here, but they're not really independent necessarily. Because once they leave the reservation, and then it's like, okay, you're subject to American law as anybody else would be. Uh, but that would be as close to what you can get as far as what uh, one of those other scenarios that uh, we see. So an ungoverned quote unquote people group. And then you have what would be a nation, which is an actual group that would constitute the same as you would have people, the only difference would be is that they have established laws uh, and that they actually have a, a land, they have a patch of land that they would consider their own that is autonomous. Okay, so the, here are the divisions that you would have. Um, now, in all that, that's just social structure and interaction. The actual people themselves are, you know, always been pretty much the same. They just are divided up basically on how they can communicate with one another, which was on the basis of language. And then, following that, you had enough of them that of the same language group that would have enough kids that made a big enough family, and then beyond that, you had enough families grow out to where you had a people group, and then those that were able to go ahead and get a piece of land for themselves to be able to establish their own sovereign government, then that, that would be a nation. But again, that's not, that doesn't make them uh, any different from, from us or from any of the other nations other than that they had some kind of principle of morality and then they also had some principle of law, rule of law that they would have establishing for governing them uh, based on what their uh, receptivity to God's light was to them. Uh, but they... Uh, it doesn't make them any different. Now, uh, for our third point, okay, physical differences. This I don't have um, script drawn because this is basically going to be, to some degree, almost kind of like just a science lesson. So, okay, physical differences occur because of our genetic coding. Okay, so that's intrinsic to what our what we have in us in our DNA, which we get from our parents. So you have mother and father come together and then whatever they would have had at their blueprint uh, which they would have gotten from their set of mom and dad and then even going back and you can go back into you know however many generations back you can trace but what they have if you were to set out a chart um, say have two sets of two genes Okay, so you would have, say for instance, uh, capital letters AA and then capital letters BB, right? And then you would have, say, 
minuscule letters AA and minuscule letters BB. Um, you're, you have what would be dominant and recessive genes. I'd say you have, just for instance, for sake of illustration, anything that would govern as far as what we would see, your eye color, your hair color, your hair texture, skin tone, your height, your frame, and you could go on down the line as far as what we see on a physical level, our differences are going to be governed basically on the sets of genes that you have. So now there's, in particular as far as skin tone, you have uh, melanin, and then you also have a number, I, I, I had a hard time finding as far as something that was actually not from an evolutionary standpoint that was somewhat accurate. So what I have as far as, what, what as far as the material that answers Genesis put forth, there's as many as like 39 different uh, factors that, that comprise just even dealing with, with skin tone itself. But in, in the material, he said, for the sake of illustration, you would have, it would still work the same and that you would have, say, your, on, on his chart that he laid out, uh, you would have your dominants and your recessives and then you would have your your two set here, your two set here, and so any number of combination that you can come up with. So you could have, say, your large A with a minuscule A combined with a large B with a minuscule B combined, or you can have, and it all depends on whatever they would have from the parents, um, and of any number of combinations. So it would, any of those factors affected by that, um, within literally within just one generation be completely altered uh, as far as everything that you would see as far as eye color, hair color, texture, skin tone, and those kinds of things. Now, here's the thing. Uh, it also mentions that, okay, there's mutations that occur. Um, you also have the fact that we are sin-cursed and we are not as we should be, okay? We are made in the image of God. Okay, but we're marred, uh, we, so we're not quite, but we're marred because of sin. Um, and that, you know, we have death, we have disease, we have any number of things uh, that occur. And so there's mutations that are, that are in, in our DNA as a result of, of the sin curse. Uh, and so those can, those can carry on and be passed down and such. But here, uh, they don't prove which is the main argument as far as macroevolution, which is the idea that, you know, we have, as, well, what we would see as far as Darwinism, that, that we've evolved from like monkeys or we've evolved from like the frogs or from a rock. Um, it is, microevolution is fine because that's within, that's just, that's basically differentiation within the species. Variation within a kind. Yeah, variation within a kind, I'm sorry. <laughs> But you don't have proof that, because you would have, in, in order for you to be able to go ahead and have uh, complete change of the kind, uh, as far as what macroevolution tries to propose, you would have to have new information introduced into the genetic code, and that's not possible. I mean, unless God supernaturally does something other than that, as far as just on, on our on how we, yes? I was going to say, mutations are always bad. They're never good, which sort of goes against the teaching of evolution. But, no. So, so you can have a mutation that has a survival benefit, but like you said, it's always a loss of information. So, for example, you have uh, beetles that can fly, and then they're put on an island that is extremely windy. And a few of those have a mutation that is a loss of information on the ability to form their wings. Those ones survive, the other ones don't. So it had a survival benefit even though it was a detrimental information loss mutation. Aren't mutations always detrimental? Almost always. Almost <laughs> always. <laughs> yeah. Find a bit always an Almost <laughs> always. Just about. Um, yeah. You, I mean, you can you can have um, well, any of 
<laughs> I'm trying to think. <laughs> it sounds bad. I was trying to think of the politically correct term, but the extra chromosome individuals. <laughs> you could have that's a mutation, actually. Totally. Get void halfway with um, retardation, mental retardation. Then you would have, you know, because you have an extra chromosome. That's um, extra information? Or that's lacking? Lacking. No, that's just a mutation. You're not supposed to. That would be. The well, leader said it's always missing information. Is that missing, though? It's an extra chromosome. That's not really missing. That's okay. so, so the mutation you're talking about is like, so some of the chromosomes get transplanted or you know, rearranged, scrambled in some way. So that's possible, and that's almost always a detrimental thing. It's not really new information, though. It's um, like taking the letters of the alphabet and just rearranging them a little bit. In other words, you can't, you wouldn't, what I mean by new information or new code would be, um, well, would be like with some of the, not just the Germans in, in World War II, but also the Chinese, or actually the Japanese. But the Chinese did some of this as well um, during World War II, which they would take, the Russians did this as well, actually. Like they, they would take a gorilla and then they would try and mate it with like a man. And so, but they would, they would do it on a, like a, in a lab. So they would take the DNA from one, DNA from another, and then try and, you know, or say you could take um, a lot of stuff that we would read about, like in science fiction, some of the comic books or whatnot. Okay, so you want to create a Spider-Man, right? You want to be able to have somebody that has, or even like an ant, uh, take they take the yeah. ability that an ant would have as far as their strength, which you could carry, you know. And then okay, so let's let's take what we can from this thing, and then put it in, into a human and see what we can come up with as far as we can make a make a, a Superman or uh, you know an Ant-Man or Spider-Man or something along those lines and it, it just doesn't work you can't do that because it's it's not they're not of the same kind they're not of the same species they're not they, they just it doesn't mix it's not how God created it to work so they would have to they would have to be able to take that and introduce that code specific into into to the human code, but it's not. It's not done. It's, it's not been done. It can't be done. Um, I mean, unless God supernaturally would do it, but it doesn't. It just doesn't work. It's not how He ordered things to to, to, to be to, to work. So, but the, the mutations. Sorry, did, was your question answered? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. No, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. So the um, okay, mutations do and can occur, but they're not proofs of macroevolution. Sin has detrimentally affected our genetic coding across the board, but there's a proof of new code or information being introduced into the pre-existing pool um, is what we have, or what we don't have. Okay, so when folks, now we'll, we'll take this on a regular social level. Okay, so when you look at somebody, say, well, they actually did this, if we were to go back and read some history, uh, when the British went over to Australia and they encountered some of the Aborigines that were out there, or even you could go like into Papua New Guinea when the Dutch were over there as well, or individuals like in the King of Belgium, whenever they had gone over into Congo and they started exploring further in, um, they would encounter um, some of the pygmies, some of the pygmy tribes. These guys look different than what we do. Okay? Um, so they must be of a lower species. Now, let's fast forward a bit, but the thing is, is they, they would have already been affected by Darwin's um, ideology, and then they would have thought, okay, well, we've evolved, we've become better, we're, we're a higher class, a higher species than what these individuals are, and so they might not be, because we can't really communicate with them. Now, 
they were, I guess you could say, primitive compared to what we are, but within um, their realm, as far as where they lived at, they were fine. They were still, um, if, <laughs> if, if, any, if very many of you have ever worked around folks of other nations or other cultures and in other languages, yeah. uh, if you're able to communicate, you can pick up on the fact that this person's sharp, this person's intelligent, this person, you can tell the difference as far as somebody that is uh, obviously aware and attentive as far as things are going. They may not be able to communicate uh, fluently to you because they may not have the fluency in language uh, that you're able to communicate with or communicate in. But it's not that they're dumb, it's just they've, they're from a different environment. Uh, so, in reality, they're not really different, they're still human. Uh, if they would have been able to communicate, uh, then they would see, okay, oh, this person is just another human. Uh, if you go across the board, um, not even not even dealing on a religious level, but as far as you you you'll see some pretty common characteristics as far as people. You have a sense of what what is right and what is wrong. You have usually a desire. To want to have a family and to want to seek a better life and they usually have some kind of ambition that they're pursuing uh, these are obviously this is all human desires because they're all human okay not much different they just look different uh, but they really aren't and they may act or think a little different based on whatever their uh, governing principles are with regard to morality uh, but that really comes to exposure to the Word of God. Um, so, or that comes as, as a result of exposure to the Word of God or how much equipping or training they would have had with regard to that or even just knowledge of God, you know. But the fact is they're still human. They're not really different. They're just different looking, but they're not different. They're still the same. Um, if they were different, then they would have required well, if they were different, they would have required like a different Christ altogether. Like, uh, in other words, Christ's blood wouldn't have been sufficient for them because they would have been of a different species altogether if, the, if that were true. If species, uh, differentiation of species were true. Yes? What about the giants? As far are they as... Come? Are they human? Yeah. Um... The, as, far, as far as well, giant is kind of a relative term. And it was how high is high, how tall is tall. We're not we're not told specifically, other than like say, you have um, <laughs> the, uh, Goliath. Okay, I was my mind was went blank on that. Okay, that he is at least nine feet. nine feet, a little bit over nine feet tall, as far as that would be a big framed individual. But he's human. <laughs> In other words, he's not any different. He's still somebody that would have needed Christ, that could have been saved, that had an opportunity <coughs> to be able to go ahead and receive uh, the gift of God. Um, with regard to prior to the flood, um, you have, now this is, I'm, I'm take, uh, what I'm about to give you, I can't really necessarily, I can't say it's concrete. Uh, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm taking off what I've learned from uh, basically Ken Holden with his conjecture on this, is that prior to the flood, the earth would have been like a big greenhouse. Um, things would have been a lot bigger. Not just be, we obviously lived longer. Human humans lived a way a lot longer than what we do now, uh, but we weren't as detrimentally affected by the elements. Uh, so we would have grown bigger. Like so you still that. have that's still in genetic code as far as you still have individuals. Uh, look at your NBA players. Most of those guys are almost seven feet tall. Um, I mean, I would I honestly <laughs> I would consider somebody over like six two to be kind of like a giant. 
Uh, but that's, I mean, again, that would be kind of somewhat relative. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere else? Yes. It's a little cold. Oh, you want to turn the air up a little bit? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <coughs> humans that would have been of the same so you have say when two tall people have kids usually their their kids are going to come out tall unless they have a recessive gene in them where maybe one of them doesn't get the height gene like the other two and then they keep finding other tall kids to go ahead and go keep up you know having kids with and then so they continue having tall kids or bigger bigger frame kids such, um, but they wouldn't have been giants as far as like uh, non-human. Um, they have. I don't, I'm not answering your question. Right? They. Are you, you're referring back to when we read about okay, there were giants in the land. It says there were. It, it's just one sentence in there. It says, and there were giants in the land in those days mm -hmm. before the flood. And after that, so it's kind of like putting them off, like saying they're different or something. I don't know. That's how I read it. Like they're giants in the land. So. Well, Goliath and his tribe would have been. He was a Philistine. Yeah. But he himself would have been in his family group. His tribe would have been of individuals that would have been bigger. Um, that's. I, I I believe that's why Ken Hovind makes his assertion as far as that it would have been a, of the effects of the environment that would have affected our, our as far as our growth. Uh, and not just, I mean, it affected our lifespan further down, uh, but it also affected as far as, there's other factors as well. Um, when you were spread out, now it isn't always the case because you also, you also you have basically kind of like, well, for lack of a better term, like a gamble of whatever genes you get that affect as far as how you, your appearance, as far as your skin tone and such, but um, the amount of melanin that you have, that's genetic based on what you receive from your parents. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are somewhere where you don't have a lot of sun, uh, then you're going to have difficulty getting vitamin D in you. And so... Um, Keeping, keeping, keeping um, from having some kind of deficiency to pass on because of the lack of vitamin D in you, um, unless you're able to supplement that somehow, uh, would be something that would affect generations down. Uh, and the same thing would be as far as if you are somewhere where, say, maybe you have lighter skin, but you are in an area where you have a ton of a sun, and so you would have. Uh, a lot more susceptibility to be burned or get skin cancer and those kinds of things. Uh, and so it's not that it's not possible. Um, it's, it's just um, that those would be uh, environmental factors that would affect. I'm sorry, go ahead. So before the flood, there was also less degradation in the genome. So Adam and Eve had a perfect set of genes and then every time you copy it in a sin cursed world, there can always be problems, genetic mutations, you know, failures of different genes that copy. And so, but after the, before the flood was fairly early on in that time frame, and so there had been not as much time as there has today for problems to crop up and things. And so, I mean, when you have a, the full set of genes, you know, and it's copied perfectly, um, you're going to be better off physically, you know, you're not going to have the, the problems that we'd have today that would potentially cause you to not grow as large. So it would be actually more likely that you would have, you know, fully developed, you know, Maybe the average person is bigger 
It could have been. Could have been. There was also less time for there to be the variation in um, in the genome where, you know, over time you have when, you know, the people groups got separated at Babel, then they, uh, you know, different people groups, you know, would have a uh, set of genes that, you know, this, this people group may not have that set that includes the <coughs> genes that allow them to grow larger. And so they just wouldn't. And as you segment off, you get more and more of that uh, occurring within a people group. We actually have some of that to some degree now remaining from World War II. Um, not to the same extent as where as would like as far as what Hitler was trying to do in the scientists with isolating okay, you want specifically blonde hair, blue eyes, and then a larger frame, taller frame. Uh, you have, I actually don't have a specific number on this, but it seems like most Germans, but that's a relative term. I mean, I don't know how big the population of Germany is, and then even then, how much of that was affected uh, by his program in being able to reproduce, you know, his, his uh, master race, but you would have, that, that's what he was trying to basically do, was weed out, okay, all the undesirables so that we would have our perfect man. And so you have, but you do have a number of, the, of, of uh, Germans that are blinder, blue eyed and taller to some degree as a result. Though not, a, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put it all on that, but that, that did take place. And that was something that he was trying to do in isolate, so you could even have that within one. Well, actually, you can probably have that within one generation, actually. If you have that on a larger scale, and then you have, you know, that that just multiplies it, you know, exponentially. Well, I'm not saying that that's what they did, because I don't know. <laughs> we just know that they were there, and then that, but they were still human. They were still somebody that, you know, Christ died for, and that salvation was available to them. It wasn't like they were just a... Uh, some kind of weird anomaly, some kind of weird set of species or something like that. They're, they're humans. Yeah. Um, but even, well, I don't know, he was considered a giant, but you have Saul, was head and shoulders above the rest of the nation. Um, and, and he was an Israelite, he wasn't even a, a Philistine. I'm sorry, did that answer your question or no? Okay. Um, okay, so our differences are because of our genetic coding. And the divisions that we see in scripture are based on language, on family, on people, which is basically just a larger group, and then your nation, uh, which is, you would call it, you know, quote unquote, governed collective of people. Uh, and in all of this and none of this do we see um, a new genetic code being introduced, and we don't see. Uh, that the differences make for somebody to be, you know, other than human. Yeah, there, there's no, they're, they're human, they're still human. There's still somebody from whom Christ died, there's still somebody that, um, you know, needs the love of God, needs salvation, uh, that, you know, for all intents and purposes, you can, you can basically procreate with. There's nothing, there's no, other than if they have a, you know, um, they don't have a heart for God, you know, if they're born again, um, and, you know, they're living for the Lord, then there's nothing, there's, there, there shouldn't be really a division there. Um, there are divisions, obviously, because if you can't communicate with somebody, <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard uh, to do much of anything with, but the fact is, uh, Christ died and he broke all the, will, the middle wall partition he, he made to where the barriers would, uh, would be removed so that they can be reached as well. All right. uh, does anybody have any questions or any more? I don't, I don't yes. have a question, but I have a comment. I found an article that showed a cross comparison between blood types and uh, races, people groups. Okay. And I found it interesting that 
for every blood type, while there was a variation between the races, there was a high correlation between the percentages all across the races. So if you were in a blood type that is a fairly uncommon blood type in your race, it's also fairly uncommon in all the others. Or if you have a fairly common blood type in your race, it's fairly common across all the races. Again, just saying that we're from one, one blood. I see. Okay. Alright, um, we're dismissed. I was going to ask you if you could... If you could I, was, I was looking for something online, along those lines. Yeah. I just I, I couldn't find it. Yeah, so. I'll send you what I have. Okay. We're dismissed. Thank you. There you go. I think it's a thief. That's my personal thing.